I'm so glad to see everyone here. I was expecting a full house. I think the Lord was expecting it too. And it's, it's kind of disheartening because this is the first day of the Holy Week. And it's so important this very day because it was the beginning of the end, the time of Jesus in the flesh. And, um, you know, my heart goes out to him because, you know, when we grieve, God grieves. When we're disappointed, God's disappointed. And he knows just where everyone is. There are people that are sick and they couldn't come. They would spread germs. You know, they're just using wisdom. And there are those that could have come that didn't come. And we just need to leave them in God's hands. But we need to hear this message because I think, and there's many people that could elaborate a lot better than I can, but I'm just going to share what God's given to me. And the name of this, I would call it the Day of the Palm. You know, the palm tree is a very, very um, strong plant. It can go through many things, you know, different variations of heat, and of course it cannot withstand freezing weather, yeah, but it can withstand very hot weather as long as it has moisture within it. And um, this lesson is about when Jesus came into the city and what his followers did and what Jesus went through. Let's go to Luke chapter 19. I'll be reading out the King James. I'll be going back and forth from King James and the Amplified my daughter bought me a new Bible yesterday, so I didn't have my name for prayer because it's in my other Bible. <laughs> and that's what's hard about getting something new because you like to have all, everything right there. And today I was wanting to pull it out and it's in my other Bible. So I'm sorry.
speaking on this, but I wanted to lean towards what God felt. You know, we know the people that were there were worshiping him and yelling out and, and, and just, they were bold and, and, you know, they weren't ashamed. They just gladly worshiped him as he came through the city. They threw down their clothes to make the way. They threw the palms down to make the way so that that donkey, which was carrying the king of kings, could walk on holy ground. Now, those palms represented worship, the strength, the joy of the Lord, his healing, his holiness. And they had, they had Jesus to go on top of these palms and these clothing so they wouldn't be in the dirt and upon the city. But because he was holy, people were worshiping him, and they threw down those things so that he would come, as the scriptures had foretold, and Jesus was fulfilling these scriptures. He knew this day that he woke up. He knew what he already was planning to do, but his flesh, his flesh felt he felt the rejoicing that felt so good, but knowing that within the week, everything was going to change. He rejoiced within his spirit, feeling that this is the way it should be. I am their king, they are my children, and they shall worship me. So all through the city, he goes on this donkey, and the people just hailing him all the way. But to listen to the Pharisees, and we have Pharisees today. That if you don't do something the way they feel you should, you're out of line, you're out of order. Stop them. They're being too noisy. They're embarrassing you. This isn't of God. He wouldn't want this. Stop them, I tell you. They probably said, oh, I, we're going to call the guards. We're going to stop them for you. If you don't listen to us, the Pharisees and their little pompous spirit, attitude, with a critical eye, critical spirit, critical heart. I would imagine glare at Jesus. That's, what's, that's what happens in some churches, or when they see you. If you don't play the part, they glare at you. Or they, they turn their head like they don't know you're there, or walk past you and just ignore you. The Pharisees hated that Jesus would be in worship. They wanted people to look to them. Jealousy was there. Fear was there. Because it said there was a multitude of people worshiping him. <coughs> the king was fearful. This Jesus, people are following him and not us. He's turning them away from us. So they're not going to listen to us. And Jesus knew their thoughts. He already knew what they were thinking. He knew their hearts. He knew the hearts of those that were worship, worshiping him also. That they were very fickle. That they would turn against him within a few days. Just a few days. And Jesus was not going to stop them from worshiping him because that was his will. That is our purpose here. We are to worship him. And we're not to be quiet. This is the example. Jesus does not want us to sit and just stare. It's not his will for me to sit and hold my hands, sit on my hands, and not worship him. He's in this room. But I think sometimes in all churches, not, you know, not... We forget that we are in his presence now. We may not see a donkey come through those doors with him on the back, but he's already here. And how do we worship him? Think about this. This was his will. I realize some, some do not feel well. Some have arthritis, and sometimes it's hard. It, I know. I have those days. Hard to raise that arm, but I'll tell you, if you'll make a, you know, make an effort, he's going to do it the rest of the way. 
He wants us to learn to praise Him and worship Him and not be quiet. I'm not saying act like a crazy person. I think you know what I mean. We, there's balance to everything. But He wants us to be joyful in worship, to be noisy in worship, not be quiet, not be afraid. Because if somebody beside me doesn't like how I worship, I'm not sorry because I know what he brought me from. So I have a lot to worship him for. And I haven't been worshiping him enough of what he deserves. I think we can all work towards that, can't we? That when we come in here, even today, I know we weren't going to have palms every day. But I want everybody to stand up, please. Get your palms out. And come towards the end of your, your pews. Now, in your mind, I want you to really get this in your mind. Jesus already is here. So as he's coming down this aisle, we need to lay our palms down. Lay them all down. Lay them all down. And start praising him. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you. We worship you. We give you the glory, oh God. Holy is your name, Jesus. We just give you the praise. And we, we just want to honor you this day, oh God. This is your day. It's not about us, but it's about you. And we just praise you and lift you up, oh God. Lord, touch each and every one in this room, oh God. Guide us and strengthen us and lead us in your ways, oh God. Lord, we, we need more of you, more of you each and every day. Help us, oh Lord, to be strong. Help us to be bold in our worship towards you. You know our hearts and you know those that are meek and those that are a little, little more afraid to be able to just speak out. But you know their hearts and their minds and their spirit, oh God. And Lord, we place them in your hands. We place this church in your hands. But Lord, we give you the glory this day. If we had coats and things we could throw down, if we had more palms to throw down, we would do this for you. We would fill this whole floor up, oh God. And as you walk through these pews and as you go around this, this room, oh God, and your anointing touches minds and hearts and spirits, your healing, Lord, touches our hearts and our bodies, oh God. You know the needs. And Lord, I know you have angels all around us, oh God. And Lord, this day, we want to give you the praise and the glory, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, oh God. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just leave your palms down. Okay. You can, you can be seated. But you can imagine that day. They may have, there may have been some super fever, those that were hurting so bad. It took everything to get to that area because Jesus was coming in. There were sick. There were those that were dying. They probably got up and took the effort just to go to see him, to watch him come, because that was the Messiah, that was the healer, that was the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and we've got him. He's here. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one that's going to take us up into heaven, the one that is pre preparing a place for you and I today. He's coming. He's coming soon. He's coming. We need to get excited. What has he brought you from. How deep did he have to go to bring you up? Out of the muck and the miry clay. How deep? Don't be quiet. Don't be quiet about that. Just remember, he deserves our worship. Not people. Don't worship me or Pastor Rick or anybody, any leader in this church. He's the one that must be worshipped. What did and, and we know that Jesus said, if I keep if they keep silent. The very rocks will cry out in praise, Amplified says, in praise and worship. If we keep quiet, yes, you do go through things and situations in your family life, and it's hard. We may have spouses that are, you know, not where they need to be with the Lord, but we need to be where the Lord wants us to be. We need to be that witness to our spouse, no matter what or how hard things might get. We need to be that stronghold of God's anointing and spirit and through prayer. We can make be that witness. We can make that difference because he has made a difference in our life. And we've got to allow him to shine through us. We cannot be quiet or the rocks will cry out. I wonder sometimes, all these earthquakes, 
Is that the rocks crying out? This earth, this world, these people have destroyed, basically destroyed this earth. They pushed God away. Is that why the rocks are crying out? Is that why? I really believe it. I really do. I feel it. This earth is groaning. The Savior's about ready to come. So he's going to groan a lot more. You're going to see a lot more shaking. Because God's trying to reach our people. His people that he created on this earth to serve him. That he's such a gentleman that he won't force you to love him. You can't force people to love you. You can't. Either, either they choose to or they don't. We choose whether we want to hate or love. You may have a reason to hate somebody. But God says, forgive them. And sometimes you have to pray, God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Because they don't know him. They don't know what you know. Something is, part of it is their will, but something has blocked their understanding. And we know that we have Satan, the one that's trying to, you know, destroy each and every one of us, sifting us, getting our minds and our spirit off track from what we need to be in. Because it's all about him. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. There is no other way. I'm going to read the Amplified Bible a little bit, touching on what I had already Then taking the twelve disciples aside, he said to them, listen carefully. And that's what I'm saying to you. Listen carefully. Take this word and quote it and eat it and apply it to your heart and your spirit. Because it is vital to God that we worship him. That we aren't ashamed of him. We all worship in our own ways. But ask him to help you to become bold. In his spirit, his anointing. Or it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. I don't care if you think, you know, you're just a little too happy. I'm happy because I have him. I get, I, I might sing loud because that's just me. I might pray out loud sometimes and that's just me. Because he's my strength. He's why I'm here. He's why I'm here today. I would not be alive without him. But he wants us to listen carefully to his word. Listen. We are going up to Jerusalem, and all things that have been written through the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled and completed. He will be betrayed and handed over to the Gentiles, which are the Roman authorities, and will be mocked and ridiculed and insulted and abused and spit on. And after they have scorched him, they will kill him. And on the third day he will rise from the dead. But the disciples understood none of these things. None of these things about the approaching death and resurrection of Jesus. This was hidden, this statement was hidden from them, and they did not grasp the meaning of the things that were said by Jesus. They didn't understand his very own disciples. I don't want to understand that right there. He's telling them. Is it unbelief? I don't know. Maybe it's too much for them to grasp that they've got him with them now and so he's going to be taken away. He's going to be slaughtered basically. And he he's not going to stop it. He could. He could just blink his eyes and he could have evaporated everybody. But he made a promise. He came down here for a purpose. So that we, he had us in mind, our grandchildren in mind, their children, their grandchildren, till the day he comes. He knew he had to come down and suffer and take on our sins so 
so that we might think through his grace. So is it too much to put a palm on the stamp? Somebody might say, well, that's silly. Act on like this. When we get to heaven, we're not going to be sitting still. I'm not going to be. I'll be dancing and running because I can. Because I can. And you can too. There's people, and I, I look at people that are in wheelchairs. I saw a little one yesterday, and I started praying. I, they were getting in a car. Mother was, had to pick up the little one out of the, you know, she's probably six or seven in a wheelchair. And I'm thinking, thank you for not allowing me to have to go through that. But bless that family. Because their struggles are worse than mine were. It takes a lot of love to help. Our sacrifice, but Jesus sacrificed much more for us. And we must be sensitive to Him. We must be. Even though they were with Jesus, they still didn't understand. They were fleshly. I, I would say they were walking in the flesh instead of the Spirit. Because they were trying to understand in the, in the flesh. Because our minds cannot comprehend many things. But when we're in the spirit, when our mind and our spirit towards God, he, he shows us things and we understand things. So I have to believe they were walking in the flesh and not the spirit, or they would have understood the spiritual things that God was trying to teach them. You know, if we seek, God will answer it. We ask. He will be there. They weren't seeking him this day that he was trying to warn them. God had to fulfill that prophecy. In Zechariah 9 9. Brother Mark, you want to read that? It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout. choose to continue in. And the heart of a parent just weeps. Because they're going the wrong way. And you can sense somewhat of the depth. Of course we can't hold what he carried and what he still carries. The grief of those that don't want to serve him. That wouldn't accept him. And that's what he feels today. Much greater 
than you or I could ever feel. And that bothers me. <laughs> it bothers me. So, when you don't see people, you know, they don't come. They don't acknowledge him or care about what he feels about things. You know, they people want to go drinking and they want to drug and they want to be with other people and do their thing and come to church and think it's still okay to live in those sins and just say, well, I'm a Christian, I believe. But do they really? I don't believe what they believe. That would be unbelievable. Because if you believed in who he was, you lived after who he was, that's believing, doing something with your beliefs, standing in faith, reacting to the word of God, and following and being obedient, that's believing. It grieves you when someone comes and thinks they can keep that life and still say they're a child of God. It, it saddens me, not to judge them but it saddens me. And one thing I've, I've said to someone, don't take my love and kindness for acceptance for your sin. There's a difference. You can love the person, but hate the sin. And that love does not dismiss that sin. And the same thing goes with God's love for you and I. His love does not dismiss our sin that we can just continue to be the way we always were. We can't come to God and just keep all of our life that it, as it was and just apply God when we want to. Either you're in or you're out. That's how God sees it. Follow after me. And I will take care of you. I'll be with you. I'll protect you. I'll heal you. I'll strengthen you. I'll give you peace. I'll give you joy. So many people are crumbling because they don't have any joy. They don't have any peace because they haven't allowed him in. Yes, we're going to go through grief. People pass and it rips our heart out. It rips God's heart out when, when people are lost and they pass. But there's a time for everything. And we got to leave that in his hands. What is Whatever the cost, that has to be our heart. God, whatever you ask me to do, I will do. Are you willing to follow him? Just think of the, the rich young ruler. He believed the scriptures, he followed them, but he would not let go of all that he had to follow after Jesus. It saddened him when Jesus said, let everything go and follow me. He put his head down and walked away. And that's what's happening today. I'm not willing to stop. I'm not willing to let go just to do what you want me to do. I'll do this much, but don't ask me to do that. That's where unity has to be in the church. Whatever the need is, whatever gross God wants to take us, we're willing. God, you just show me. Show me. Don't let anything disrupt what you're trying to teach me and how to live. You know, one of the greatest lies that we believe as humans that gets so distorted in the Word of God is about wine, drinking. I've been studying and studying. You notice that Jesus went for the wedding, pales. The, whatever you call those things, bases of, they were water in there, right? Water. And he stirred his finger in there and made it into wine. There's different types of wine in those days. Fermented and watered down, which is more like juice. And they take everything about wine and think, well, this is, we were allowed to drink wine. This is okay with God, so I can drink. I can be a drunk. I can do whatever I want. But it's not true because of the custom in that day. They didn't want to drink strong drink. And God forbid the priest and his family to drink strong drink, which is wine fermented. 
why would we think, because we're supposed to be priests of our home, right? Why would you think that it's okay for you to drink it if he said to the priests and their families, those that were set apart for him, for God, were not to drink it? Only for stomach problems. That was only the one thing that, that Paul spoke of for medical needs. And it's one of the greatest lies that the enemy has been able to get into the church today to say it's okay. When so many scriptures tell you no, God specifically said no. So we need to ponder on that. But I read about a custom, they added water. They added water. Jesus took water. It was already water and just added a little juice and made it the wine that wasn't fermented. And that was so interesting. I said, yes, I understand. There's different types. So how are we any different? We are supposed to be kings, or not kings, princes and priests of our home to be separated, to walk holy as he is holy because his holiness covers us. To be ye holy for I am holy. That doesn't say be perfect because you can't. But because his holiness covers us and because we are fighting against sin and temptation every day, his holiness still covers us until we choose this, until we choose that, then he backs us. That Holy Spirit backs away from us. But when we repent, he covers us. We must remember these principles in our daily life. We want to please Him. We want to please the Father. This is the first day of the Holy Week. We need and on praise throughout the palms when we praise. You don't have to have palms in your home. But when we are raising our hands and we're waving to Him and we're worshiping Him, these are the palms that we have. Because he gives us our hands to lift up and to worship him because he deserves it. So these palms may look silly to somebody, but to God, there's a magnitude of worship. Because you are willing to come to the end of your pews where some in some churches would never be saying, I'm not pulling that, forget it. But you were willing to do a simple thing that meant the world to the Lord, that represented him, because he comes in the sanctuary, and he needs to walk on holy ground. We need to give him the glory. Let's all stand.